Good morning. My name is Terry Jones, and I'm going to be giving an alcohol ink demonstration today on a simple landscape. What I have here is I have some colors of Anirondack alcohol inks. There is red pepper, um, botanical, sailboat blue, pool, and butterscotch. I have two containers of alcohol. I have one straw, uh, actually a coffee stirrer and I have a small brush. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do a sky and how I'm going to do that is is fairly um, simple. I'm not going to make it a very complicated sky. I'm going to open up my my um, alcohol inks. What you'll notice is that I actually don't shake them. I kind of just twirl them around. Starting with the lightest color toward the horizon, I'm going to let some alcohol, uh, let the alcohol ink just spread on the UPO paper. I'm going to take a little bit of this. And I am then going to take my straw here and I'm going to gently just manipulate this, kind of let it come off. I'm using the uh, the actual piece of uh, freezer paper here almost as a blotter. I'm kind of liking that. I think I'm going to try one more time. I want to just come off with the sky. I'm planning on, I think, putting some, um, some snow cap in it so after I get the mountains on. Um, I'm going to do um, some mountains, and I've kind of changed my mind a little bit. I'm going to take some... Uh, no, I'll continue with what I was going. I'm going to do red pepper and botanical for the mountains, and I'm going to hold my piece of paper, and basically I call it doing a Y, an uh, upside down Y. I'm going to quickly go across the paper with the one color. And then the next thing I'm going to do, you should have opened up your colors prior to doing this, is I'm going to take a second, a second row with the green and just allowing these to kind of become. Um, I really will continue to say less is more. I don't want this to really end up with a lot of uh, a lot of blending. I want it to kind of mingle on the paper itself and uh, just kind of get some hills. You'll notice that I'm holding the paper kind of what I would call catty corner and that is so that it will um, flow in that direction. It's just about dry, not quite. This is a pretty quick process here. I'm going to get some, um, this is butterscotch, and I'm going to take a little bit of butterscotch, and I'm going to catch the edge of, of what I had already uh, painted, and I am going to then just kind of slide this around and give me some foreground. With the foreground, I can give it a little bit of texture with this uh, stir, just kind of letting it become. Um, I think I'm going to actually kind of give it a little hill here. I like what's happening up here. I'm going to just use my coffee stir to break up that black line. I like the look of the, the forest back there. There we go. Kind of liking that. I'm going to give it another little kind of room there. There I go. Okay, well, so far I really like this. At this point, I may want to decide that I want to put, do a few additions to uh, the painting. Um, I was planning on putting some clouds in it, so here I'm going to take some of this uh, snow cap. I'm going to put just a little bit of snow cap in there. And making sure I use a perfectly clean um, straw, coffee stir, I'm going to just use a little bit of this in my sky here to kind of 
give me a bit of an indication of some nice interesting clouds. Um, the bottom of the clouds are usually uh, are usually somewhat flat, so this is a good tool to use for that. Okay, and I'm liking that that sense of cloudiness up there. Um, and the second thing is I'm not particularly fond of this area right in here. It has um, it hasn't really done what I would really want. So I'm thinking I need to put a pond in there or a lake. It's we're we're up in the mountains a little bit here. So here I'm going to what you'll see is I have the horizon is pretty much flat. Um, mainly because when you're looking at the distance that kind of is that is what happens with the horizon. Um, so I'm cleaning out using the using the um, blotter, the freezer paper is blotter paper. I'm cleaning that out. I think I'm going to clean this a little bit down here too. I, let's just get a little bit of a cliff of some course word here. Okay, so I'm liking that. I'm going to put just a tiny bit, the tiniest bit of blue in there. Whoa, that's not a tiny bit. Whoops. Quickly working with it. Alcohol ink, an opportunity to change your mind. My pond got bigger. And that's okay. Okay, I'm liking it though. I will let that be. Um, this got a little dark and it's still wet enough that I can go back in and, and, and lighten up a little bit. And um, I think that what I probably will do for that is take just a little bit of the green I used, put it in a uh, palette, and um, put some more uh, tree line in there. Now what you'll see is I'm kind of swirling the green around in this palette. The idea is that I want to get a lot of the alcohol out of it. I want it to be fairly thick when I work with it again. Um, the reason being that if I let it, if I used it immediately, it would have been, it would have bloomed tremendously. Here I'm going to use the blooms a little bit to to make my trees, but I'm, I don't want it to bloom a huge amount. So here I'm going to put some more some more trees and I'm just laying the brush down letting the shapes become on their own. You can see here I'm just laying this brush down letting the shapes become. Um, I can come down a little. If it gets too dark, I can clean it out. It got a little dark up in, at the top here. What you'll see here is now I'm cleaning this out, and then when I go back, it'll be lighter. Um, and putting a little more in the way of trees. I can, if I, if I choose, I can actually um, pull down some darks I'm going to end up making this look like that you're seeing through some of these trees. That there's a there's a tree line here and there's a field behind it. Um, I want to keep fairly random doing this, not having everything the same. Ah, uh, here I go. And I may choose to put just a few more trees over in this area up here. Um, you'll see that my uh, that my uh, the paint, the alcohol ink is dried in this, but I can reconstitute it with a little bit of alcohol itself and go back, give these trees a slightly different color. I might even want to put a little bit of 
of take a little bit of that red that I used and pull some of that through to just give it some some variation of, of color in here. Let me see how that works. And just giving some sense of shadow in there. Well, I still think I need a little more in that area. So I will take a little more, clean off my brush. Give it some time to get some of the alcohol out and put some more color in this area. I love the way it just, you kind of go with the flow here. Not, not really worrying particularly about making sure everything is perfect. Let's just, let's just kind of make a few little connections here. Let's get a little variety here. Okay, kind of liking that. And at this point I can just give a little more um, texture to the foreground by just sprinkling a little bit. This I'm just hard for you to see me doing this, but I'm just sprinkling a tiny bit of the alcohol. Um, I don't want to sprinkle too much as I just did there, because it gives it too much texture. Um, I can also, if I choose, if I want, I could put a few uh, light pieces of, of lines or straw or whatever, just using the alcohol itself that's going to bloom out. Okay, this is a little I didn't like that, but I'm going to soften it a little bit. Okay. So I think that that is a fairly um, complete little painting. It is not quite dry. Um, I may end up making the decision once it dries to put a sailboat into the into the little lake here. Um, that's kind of still up in the air a little bit. I think I'm going to pull the lake a little farther in. And um, I think it's done. Thank you for watching. Okay, I'm back. I just wanted to show you the finished piece here. I'm going to pull it up close for you. Here it is all done and um, mat it. I think it's a very serene looking piece. Thank you.